This video is for content publishers. As a publisher, this video will help you understand how to work with live content and how to use the push updates feature. Specifically, we'll look at how to determine if a product is authorized to instructors, how publisher changes affect the instructor's copy of the product, how to use push updates to sync the publisher and instructor versions, and things to avoid when working with live products. To understand push updates, we'll need to look at how a product looks to instructors over time. When an instructor authorizes a product can affect what their version looks like. Let's begin by looking at a publisher product on a specific date. It's August 3rd and the publisher has an AP Chemistry book with two chapter question sets. Chapter 1 has 10 questions. Chapter 2 also has 10 questions. In this scenario, the AP Chemistry product is live, which means that we have either provided authorization codes to teachers, or the product is available through single sign-on or a learning management system. If you want to check if a product is authorized to instructors, you can open it in the Content Manager section and check the authorization report. With the product open, Click the Authorizations button in the button bar. Then select Report. In the Authorizations Report dialog box, look at the License Used column. In this case, I can see that there has been an authorization code issued for this product and two licenses have been used. Anytime you see that authorizations for a product have been used, you need to take care making changes to that product. To summarize, on August 3rd, the publisher product has two question sets with 10 questions each. On August 3rd, Instructor 1 authorizes the product. In the examples in this video, instructors will be authorizing products using the registration page and authorization codes provided by the publisher. Keep in mind that based on your configuration, Instructors might access content via single sign-on on your website or through an LMS instead of using the registration page. After registering, Instructor1 logs into their account. The first time an instructor logs in, the content for the product is pushed to them. It's very important to understand that instructors receive the content as it is when they log on for the first time. This is the only time that the content is automatically pushed to them. We'll see the implications of this shortly. When Instructor 1 logs on for the first time, the publisher version of AP Chemistry has two question sets, so they receive those two question sets. Chapter 1 has 10 questions. Chapter 2 has 10 questions as well. So on August 3rd, Instructor 1's version of the product exactly matches the publisher version. Now suppose that on August 4th, the publisher makes changes to the AP Chemistry product. They add 5 questions to Chapter 1 so that it has 15 questions. The publisher also adds a third question set. The new Chapter 3 question set has 10 questions. Keep in mind that in general, you want to have all of the question sets and tests in the product completed before instructors begin authorizing it. You can, however, do a staged release where you release part of the content while you finish the rest of it. If you're interested in doing a staged release, contact your client relations manager to discuss the options. Here is a summary of the changes the publisher made on August 4th. Let's see how that affects Instructor 1. If we look at Chapter 1 for Instructor 1, we'll see that it only has 10 questions instead of 15. We'll also notice that there are only two question sets instead of three. Remember that instructors receive a copy of the publisher product as it was the first time they logged in, and there is not an automatic push if publishers add more content. To see this illustrated, 
Let's see what happens when a new instructor authorizes the product on August 4th. After the publisher makes changes to the product on August 4th, Instructor 2 authorizes the product and logs in for the first time. Notice that Instructor 2 has three question sets. And Chapter 1 has 15 questions. Looking at this summary, we can see that Instructor 1 has the content arrangement as it was available on August 3rd when they first logged on. And Instructor 2 has the content arrangement from August 4th when they logged on for the first time. Now, let's see how we can use the Push Updates feature in the Content Manager to get Instructor 1's copy of the product in sync with the updated Publisher product. In the Content Manager section, open the product. Notice that in the Created column, we can see the dates the question sets were created, and that those dates correlate with the different dates that the two instructors logged on for the first time. Anytime you add new questions to an existing set or test, or you add new question sets or tests to a live product, you need to push that content to instructors who authorized the product earlier. All you need to do is click Push Updates. A dialog box will appear that shows when the content was last pushed to instructors. In this case, we can see that it was last pushed on August 3rd which is when the first instructor authorized the product. Since the new question set was created on August 4th, that explains why they don't have it. Now all we need to do is click Push. Let's look at Instructor 1's account. When Instructor 1 logs in after the push, they will see a progress bar indicating that their content is being updated. When we expand the chemistry product, we can see all three question sets. If we open Chapter 1, we see that there are 15 questions. After we push updates, both instructors' products reflect the current state of the publisher's product. So remember, if you add content to a live product, whether it's new questions to an existing set or test, or entirely new question sets or tests, you need to push updates so that existing authorized instructors receive that new content. Now let's look at some things you can do with live content and a couple of things that you should never do. When content is live, you can make changes to existing content, like fixing typos or revising a question, without pushing updates. To see how this works, Let's make a change to Question 1 in Chapter 2. From the Pencil menu next to the question, I'll select Edit. I'm just going to change the symbol for magnesium in the Publisher version of the question so that it is bold and red. Then I'll click OK to save it. Now let's look at how the changes have affected the instructor's content. You can see that when a publisher makes a change to existing content that an instructor already has, the updates occur in real time and there is no reason to use push updates. Remember that you only need to use push updates when you add new questions or new question sets or tests to live products. What if there's a live question that is wrong or just confusing? For example, let's say that on September 2nd, the publisher received several complaints from instructors about question 10 in chapter 3. The publisher's first instinct is to simply delete the question. Let's see what happens if the publisher does that. From the pencil menu in the test generator for question 10, I'll click Delete. Then I'll click Yes in the warning dialog box. Now the publisher version of Chapter 3 has 9 questions. Let's see how this affects Instructor 1's version of Chapter 3. 
Chapter 3 still has 10 questions. We can see that the question I deleted is still there. Why is that? Once an instructor receives publisher content, it is only removed from their account if their authorization expires. So deleting a question in the publisher version of a product does not delete it from the instructor's version of that content. The reason for this is because instructors may have created tests from that publisher content. Deleting the question could affect those tests. Suppose that instructor 1 had created a 15 question test that included question 10 from chapter 3. They printed that test and gave it to students. If deleting a question from a publisher product also deleted it from instructors, it would cause all kinds of issues for this instructor. They would have a 14 question quiz in the test generator that didn't match what they printed for their students. If the instructor tried to find the missing question in the Chapter 3 question set, they wouldn't find it there either. Therefore, once instructors have content, it is never removed from their account until it expires and they no longer have access to it. On September 1st, the publisher version of the product matches Instructor 1's copy of the product. On September 2nd, the publisher deletes a question from Chapter 3. Now the publisher's Chapter 3 has one less question than Instructor 1's. What happens if another instructor authorizes the product after the deletion? Remember that instructors receive the content as it is when they log on for the first time. Therefore, Instructor 3 gets Chapter 3 with 9 questions. So if there's a problem with a question in a live product, don't delete the question. Instead, revise the question, even if that means rewriting it as a new question. We've seen what happens when a publisher deletes a question from a live product. Now let's see what happens if they delete an entire set. Remember if you're not sure if a product is live, you can always check the authorizations report by opening the product in Content Manager and clicking Authorizations. We can see that there are two licenses used, and where there are licenses used you should not delete questions, question sets, or tests. If you need to remove question sets or tests from a live product, contact your Client Relations Manager. In most cases, they can hide the sets or tests from instructors in the database. But so we can see what happens when a set or test is deleted from a live product, let's say that on September 4th, the publisher wants to replace all the content in Chapter 3 with new content. In this case, the publisher doesn't check the authorization report and just deletes the question set. Let's log in as Instructor 1 and look at what happens to their product. We can see that Instructor 1 still has Chapter 3. This makes sense if we remember that we never take content away from instructors. Now let's look at how deleting this question set affects new instructor authorizations. We've seen that Instructor 1 still has Chapter 3. So does Instructor 3. Also, the instructors have different numbers of questions in Chapter 3 because Instructor 3 authorized after the publisher deleted Question 10. What happens if a new instructor authorizes the product on September 4th? They will get a copy of the product without Chapter 3. As you can see, deleting content from a live product can cause all kinds of problems. None of the three instructors have the same content. When a situation like this occurs, contact your Client Relations Manager so they can help you sort things out. The Client Relations team was able to hide the deleted question set. So now if we log in as Instructor 1, we can see that Chapter 3 is hidden. Keep in mind that if the instructor used any questions from Chapter 3 in a test or another question set, those questions will remain. Only the question set will be hidden. Individual questions cannot be hidden. 
Whenever you're working with content and you're not sure if the content is live, check the authorizations report in Content Manager. If there are licenses used, then you need to be careful of what changes you make. When working with live content, you can revise questions and the changes automatically go to the instructors. You can add new questions, question sets, or tests to get those updates to instructors use push updates. Don't delete questions in live products. Revise the questions to resolve issues or create new question text. Don't delete question sets or tests. Contact your client relations manager for assistance instead.